Hey, I'm Dylan. I'm the product manager at Daconi Audio, and this is our measurement rig. Today, we're gonna go over some of our practices that we do here at Daconi Audio to bring you the measurements that are on our website. So let's get to it. The first step is to take our headphones and plug them into the cable that leads to our headphone amplifier. Once our quarter inch plug is secured to the measurement rig, we fit our headphones to the measurement rig's dummy head. It is important to get the right fit and seal so we adjust as necessary. Once I feel comfortable with the fit, I step on over to the computer and start playing with our audio precision system. We turn on our 500Hz signal generator, which will play the tone through our headphones. We can change the signal from a sine wave to a square wave, if necessary, to help match both channels on the rig. From here, we regulate our volume in the headphones. The audio precision program will try to match the volume in each headphone ear cup to be the same, left and right. If we find that our square wave is the same on each channel and have adjusted the headphones as necessary, then we will do a quick test of the frequency sweep. I typically do a quick 15 data point sweep from 10 Hz to 20 kHz, just to make sure we are matched. Okay, channels are matched. Let's get a full set of 511 data points from 10 Hz to 20 kHz. While we wait for our test results, it's important to note that we use an older 711 standard for testing our headphones. You should be able to take our measurements and compare them with other 711 tests. If you'd like to learn more about headphone testing standards, I highly recommend a few videos where Jude from HeadFi.org explains the differences in headphone testing standards. You can get those in a link below. Okay, great, our test is done. Let's repeat the testing four more times just to make sure we have enough data to present. I'm going to go ahead and adjust the headphones on the dummy for different listening positions, and I will see you in a few moments where I will explain how Josh, our data guy, generates graphs. Here we have a measurement template sheet along with our exported measurements taken from the rig. In this example, we'll be using data from our Bayer Dynamic DT1990 measurements. We have columns in our template sheet where we paste all of our measurement data into, which then gets averaged twice. First, all left channels and right channels are averaged separately to give us the average frequency response of the left and right channels. Those new values are averaged to give us frequency response of left and right channels combined. These new averages are taken and adjusted in two ways. First, we offset the measurements of the stock pads to have 0 dB at 2.5 kHz. Then, all other measurements are offset so that they intersect the stock measurements at 1 kHz. This is because our hearing is most sensitive to sounds in these frequency ranges. It makes the differences between our pads and stock more apparent in the rest of the frequency range. From here, these final values are taken and added to our chart, allowing us to show as many material options as needed. The chart is then exported, converted to an image, and uploaded to our listings to help you better understand exactly what changes you'll get when purchasing a set of our pads. Thanks for taking the time to learn about how we measure headphones here at Daconi Audio. If you liked the video, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. For all your headphone accessory needs, head on over to DaconiAudio.com.